Welcome back everybody. In today's episode of Cooking with Kirby, we're going to be making some comfort food. We're going to be making some beef stew in the Instant Pot. This is really, really easy to make, but it's so tasty. So no further ado, let's get into the recipe. Since you're here, hit the like and subscribe button and make sure that the notification bell is ring. Check me out on social media. That way you can get notification of all my new recipes. Okay, before we go over our ingredients, we're going to set our Instant Pot to saute on normal. Now, we need two, about two and a half pounds of beef. Uh, this is a chuck roast, uh, so you want to go ahead and slice them into about one inch slices. We're going to need a half of an onion chopped. I went ahead and chopped up two carrots, two stalks of celery, and you can use russet potatoes. I have red potatoes that I need to use up, so I went ahead and used uh, five baby red potatoes. But uh, if you have russet, that is fine. Go ahead and use two large russet potatoes. So to season our beef, we're gonna be using a quarter cup of flour, and we're also gonna mix in a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of salt. And we're also gonna hit it with some gra uh, fresh cracked black pepper. And we're also gonna be needing a can of tomato sauce. Now, if you have tomato paste, you can just use one, one tablespoon of tomato paste. So we'll go ahead and mix this together. Go ahead and give it a couple cracks of black pepper. Go ahead and mix everything together. We are also going to be needing some cornstarch afterwards. That way we can, you know, get it all nice and thick. So about one tablespoon of uh, cornstarch is what we're going to need. And then two, two parts of uh, just cold water. All right, now that we have our flour mixture all mixed up, we're going to go ahead and just coat our beef. Just a little at a time, give it a mix. All right, now that it's all coated up, let's get to the Instant Pot. So we already had our Instant Pot on saute, so it's already heated up. We're gonna go ahead and lay down just a little bit of oil. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in our beef. Now since I have quite a bit of meat in there, we're gonna have to do this in rotation, so make sure you go ahead and let it brown for a little bit, then stir it. So this is actually a slow cooker recipe. It's about 12.30 in the afternoon and I kind of want this for dinner. So I'm gonna be letting this cook, slow cook for four hours on high. But I will also leave in the recipe the, the instructions to be able to do this uh, using pressure, the pressure cook feature. So just go ahead and let it brown on all sides and then we'll uh, add some more stuff to it. Also, we'll be needing a half of a cup of red wine. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the beef really quick, just momentarily. Now, all that stuff on the bottom, you wanna make sure that you deglaze all that because if not, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the burn error. You know, the, the, the Instant Pot's a little tricky when it comes to that. You know, sometimes it doesn't, you know, it give you issues and then other times, it just gives you that burn error. Now go ahead and change the, the heat on saute to less. Now we're gonna take our onions and we're gonna go ahead and deglaze the bottom of this pan. Okay, let's go ahead and add some liquid. So we'll be adding in our tomato sauce. Yeah, putting the tomato in there really helps out soften up that bottom. But yeah, that's, that's one thing that you really have to work out. I've had a couple of co uh, cooks that didn't come out too well. So that's something that I really focus when I use the Instant Pot. They say the burn error goes off after two minutes, but uh, I didn't see that on one, one of my cooks. So that's just something that you always want to make sure that you got everything on the bottom cleaned up before you actually especially when you set it to pressurize. But uh, since we're doing a, you know, a slow cook, you know, just using the slow cooker feature, it's not gonna be so intense. I did chicken and rice one time, and that rice just scorched up. So yeah, you wanna make sure that you got the bottom all cleaned up. Okay, so go ahead and put it back to normal on saute heat. Now that we got everything deglazed on the bottom, 
Now we're gonna go ahead and start adding in our other ingredients. Okay, we'll drop in our beef. And the remainder of our ingredients, carrots, celery, red potatoes. Like I said, you can use regular russet potatoes. Okay, so let's go ahead and mix that up. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of red wine. Okay, now we're gonna be adding in four cups of beef broth. Now we're just gonna go ahead and give this a mix. Now we'll check for seasoning at the end. Okay, so we'll go ahead and place our lid right on top. Okay, you want the vent open. You do not wanna put it to seal. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and select slow cook and it's on my normal setting on high uh, for four hours. Uh, if you wanna do it on low, you can do it for eight, uh, eight hours. Um, but I will also leave in the recipe how to do this with pressurized. I believe it's just uh, 30 to 35 minutes pressure cooked. Uh, really simple. You can use the exact same ingredients as this whole recipe, but if you wanna do pressurized, just hit pressure cook and set it for 30 minutes on normal. So I'm gonna let this cook and I'll see you guys about 20 minutes before it's done. Okay, for the last 20 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add in our peas. These are just frozen peas, but uh, it should be all cooked up by the time this is done. It smells really, really good. Oh yeah, that smells really, really good. All right, I'll just let it do its thing. So it's got another 20 minutes to go. You wanna go ahead and press down and then. There's no pressure in there, so. All right, see you in about 20 minutes. All right, so our timer's up. As you can see, it's real liquidy. Mmm, this smells good though. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna be adding in one tablespoon of cornstarch, and we're gonna mix in two tablespoons of water with it. Make sure you stir this really well. You don't want any clumps of uh, cornstarch in your stew. And once it's all dissolved, go ahead and add it in. So now actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the saute button. And just mix this together. And depending on how thick you want it, if you want it a little bit more thicker, go ahead and add another tablespoon. But I'm not looking for it to be like a real thick, like gravy consistency. I just want like a thick, nice thick soup. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just put it to high. I'm gonna just get it going and then I'm gonna just shut it off. Right now is actually a good time for you to check for seasoning. Now in that beef broth, it was nicely seasoned, so I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be too far on seasoning or if I might not even need, it, need any. Just a tad bit. Add a little bit of kosher salt. Let's see how we're there. Okay, let's check seasoning again. That's perfect. That's perfect. Alright, we're gonna call this good. We'll go ahead and shut it down and serve it up. Yep, this is some good stuff right here. Careful, it's hot. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Talking about flavors of childhood. Reminds me of my mom's beef stew. This is some really, really good stuff. Hey, listen, just because I did it in the Instant Pot doesn't mean you can't do it in the Crock Pot. That's why I'm doing these type of videos, so that way you can do it in the crock pot as well if you don't have an Instant Pot. Any slow cooker or multi-cooker like, like an Instant Pot, you can do this recipe. If you're new to my channel, 
consider hitting the subscribe button that way you can see future videos just like this. As always, I'll leave the link in the video description and in the comment section so that we can go to my website, cookingwithkirby.com, to get the full printable recipe. I have these recipes. They're really good. You should try them out. Now, y'all be beautiful and take care.